Yokoso Tomoyo. This is Noir Alley, and I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Today we have something from late in the film noir movement. It's a Columbia Pictures release from 1959 called The Crimson Kimono. Now, it could be one of the first examples of a buddy cop movie, which in the 1980s became a genre unto itself. But this film is not your typical police procedural, and the buddy cops in this picture were not common on American movie screens in the 1950s. In fact, there's little about this film you could call common for its time. That's because it was written, produced, and directed by Samuel Fuller. Now, if you've been watching this series from the start, or if you've read my books or been to my film festivals, then you know I am an ardent admirer of Sam Fuller. He's a complete original. Not only is he one of my favorite filmmakers, he is my favorite American of the 20th century. And I gotta say, Sam is my favorite American of this century as well, even though he died in 1997. I revere him for the extraordinary life he forged as a newspaper man, a World War II veteran, and a trailblazing filmmaker. And I love his zeal for telling what he called a yarn. He had a news hawk's nose for controversial hot button subjects and a knack for making them in a brazen style few of his contemporaries could match. Consider the film you're about to see. It was made in 1959, a pivotal year in cinema history. It was the start of the French New Wave. Films released that year by Francois Truffaut, Jean-Luc Godard, and Claude Chabrol triggered a movement away from classic film technique to a less constrained and more inventive approach to movie making. Dare I say, America had its own new wave filmmaker, a 47-year-old cigar-chomping ex-infantryman who decamped from a sweet deal at 20th Century Fox to make movies in his own iconoclastic way. His unorthodox approach to exposition, composition, and editing was not unlike what those young French cinephiles were doing in the streets of Paris. Fuller shot the Crimson Kimono on the streets of Los Angeles, mostly in the downtown area known as Little Tokyo. The camera, commanded by DP Sam Levitt, captures the neighborhood with a reporter's eye for detail. And when he worked at Fox, Sam's style was burnished by the finest studio craftsmen. But once he went independent, his films were no longer neat and tidy. Sam was out on the street, running free, and he directs like a reporter on deadline for the morning edition. Now, the hot button Sam exploits in this film is interracial romance, or to use a term from 1959, miscegenation. It's the story of two LAPD detectives, Caucasian Charlie Bancroft and his partner, Joe Kojaku, a Nisei, or second-generation Japanese-American, who fall in love with the same woman, a witness in a murder they're investigating. Now, the mystery plot is pretty sketchy, I'll admit, but it's only a hook for what Fuller really wanted to explore, a love triangle with a racial and cross-cultural edge. He was fascinated by how America has societies within the larger society. How they coexist and clash provided the fuel for this sometimes ragged but supercharged yarn. As was typical of Fuller, the casting is eclectic. This was the feature film debut of both Glenn Corbett and James Shigeta, who would go on to long careers in film and television. Shigeta was also a singer who would achieve his greatest fame two years later in the film adaptation of the Broadway musical Flower Drum Song. Australian actress Victoria Shaw, the woman in the middle, had only two credits prior to this. Fuller had seen her in the Eddie Duchin story and thought she outshone the leading lady, Kim Novak. And then there's British actress Anna Lee, almost unrecognizable as Mac, a bohemian artist who's another in Fuller's fabulous gallery of eccentric and endearing older women. More about that on the other side. Okay, after a unique title sequence, we will hit the deck running with an opening scene that is pure Sam Fuller. Prepare to be wrapped up in the crimson kimono. <laughs> 